Hey yo, it's Guido. Hey, we're gonna do something different, man. We're gonna do something different. You can see what I've got called up here is the Alpha Dogfight Trials with DARPA. And what DARPA did is took, I wanna say five or six teams, I think it was six, AI teams, and they created an AI algorithm to fly an F-16 with the ultimate goal of, of fighting each other and then the top dog of the AI would take on a human pilot in a simulated space. So that's what's going on here. Now, a couple things about that is, number one, these guys were building an algorithm, control algorithm of AI over top of an existing set of, of program, right? The, the F-16 itself, whatever program it is that they're using here, and I'm, I'm not sure if they mentioned what it is. Uh, it, looks, it looks pretty uh, chunky, so they should probably switch to DCS, uh, just you know, so we can get some good visuals there. But uh, <laughs> whatever this baseline program is that they're using, that is, uh, is program there, they have to work within that world. So these companies are going to come in here and, and make an AI that's going to try to use those constraints. And once they fight each other, the number one airplane, or the number one AI, sorry, is going to go after... A human, so they're going to take each other on here. So we're going to watch this because this this first one is is one of the first AI versus AI, and then we'll go over to talking about the AI versus the human. Who oh by the way, the human lost oh, oh to five, zero to five, zero to five. So this is interesting. There's a couple caveats to this. Uh, number one is the AI has has perfect state information, which, which is to say that the AI is fighting against the other airplane and it knows exactly where that other plane, airplane is, what its airspeed is, what its aspect angle is. And what I don't know, and I don't know if they explain this, but does it know how many Gs it's, it's pulling? Does it know what the throttle position is? There's a lot of things in here. Now, when, you, when you're fighting against another human, you don't necessarily know that. You have to look out the window, look at the airplane, and get a general idea of the aspect angle you're looking at. Where's his nose pointing? Is it pointing up? He's probably losing energy because uh, jets don't go up very well, depending on the jet. Is the nose down below the horizon? He can be gaining injury. There's a lot of things that you can, you can take away from that. He's probably not doing more than 9Gs, although humans could choose to do so. That would increase their, their rate, at least their instantaneous, potentially. If not their if not not their rate over time, depending on what they're doing and what their airspeed is, but so there's going to be constraints. And my assumption here is that it was nine Gs, and it's all within the limits of of the F-16, probably its its uh, operational limits. So the negative G is 3.5 or whatever it is. I don't know what it is on the F-16. They are going to talk about it. That's very interesting because what the AI will probably do is it is probably going to explore some regions that humans really don't do very much. One of those is negative G where you push the stick over. In the case of the F-16, it's on the side. You push the stick forward and you're now floating in the seat. They'll talk about it here in just a minute, I believe, when they get to that. So the AI is going to do some things humans may not do, which I think is going to be very interesting. And they're, it's going to do one thing that is incredibly important that we almost never do in training. And I'll get to that when we get there because it's very interesting how this goes down. But I, I wanted to talk about the end state part a little bit because as I said, humans don't have that. And an AI, depending on what, it, what sensors it has on board, is not necessarily gonna have that information either when it, if it was to really fight a human. Say we put an AI in an F-16, we turned it into a robot F-16, there, it has to have some way to gather the information about what the enemy plane is doing, and that's going to be radar, lidar, whatever, visual cues, uh, IR potentially, all these things. And it could be a fused system, but it's not going to have perfect state information through a program where it's feeding all that information directly to each other. All right, so the aspect angle, the speed, the rate of the turn, all those things, it's not going to have that. It can probably have a pretty good idea. It can probably have a pretty good idea. Uh, based on how good your sensors are, but still the AI has got to be able to sense that human or whatever it is it's fighting out there in some way. And th that's that's a big hurdle, all right? So so don't go too crazy here about, oh my gosh, the AI can dominate. There are some things it can do that are, that are pretty eye-watering, and, and it's important. Uh, I think it's things that are known that we knew it could do, but it's always interesting to actually show it happening, and then we can start thinking about you know, what does that mean exactly? So we're going to watch this first one is in one of the first AI versus AI fights. And we're going to watch this. We're going to talk a little bit and we'll let these guys, 
they're actually getting ready here to do the fights on and it's kind of how we do it which is pretty cool so hold on a second for that and we're, we'll go ahead and get this going here as soon as I uh, get this to stop there we go all right here we go get this fight on I'm ready to go let's do this all right so um, you know when you typically do these uh, neutral uh, BFM sets uh, at least in the Navy uh, we typically start off with uh, speed and angels on the left speed and angels on the right uh, turning in fights on fights on we're live at the alpha dogfight trials semi final number one physics AI versus Lockheed Martin we're gonna start the fight momentarily and then Glock and I will do a live um, you know play-by-play -play of the fight and we're off trial uh, trial day three underway uh, physics AI versus Lockheed fantastic competition yesterday all right, so fights on, fights on. They start in a neutral setup. Basically, what that means is high aspect. They're headed towards each other with a certain amount of distance, turning room in between them. And you can see that the two fighters initially make big bids downhill. There is a floor, you know, the hard deck that they talk about in Top Gun. And basically, that represents the ground. Clearly, when you're in training, that's going to be something above the actual ground so that, you know, you can hit the deck and not die. That would be fantastic in training. So it's, it's anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 and obviously AGL. They're over the water, so it's probably 5,000. We'll take a look at how low they get. But they're sitting at 13,000 or so. And you can see that the two Vipers make big, big bids. The two AIs make big bids down into the vertical. That seems to be fairly typical of what they're doing. And one of the reasons you take... An airplane down into the vertical as you're using God's G and that allows you to have more turn okay you get more turn rate because you're not working against gravity going uphill there's an old saying we say go up blow up it's pretty easy if you're the first guy to go up for the other one to carve inside of that and get a shot now what you're gonna see is the, the AI is incredibly aggressive in putting the gun onto the enemy and that's something important to talk about right now there are no missiles in this competition and that would change things in fact it would probably depending on the missile that you gave it without getting any classified stuff it would make these very quick fights <laughs> so someone's dying quick because based on the capabilities especially of heat missiles they can uh, they can shoot you in a lot of directions let's just put it that way however there's also defenses so they've got rid of all of that and in the modern combat in the modern air-to-air -air regime we don't really want to get to this where it's guns only and that's what this is okay if you've merged all your missiles have missed that's why they call them missiles by the way and not hittles all right <laughs> sometimes they don't work they miss they don't fuse lots of reasons why they've been decoyed blah 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 when we get then to the end game here with just the guns this requires you to put your airplane behind his airplane and get it into the camera and shoot him okay usually with a fairly low aspect shot break break the AI gives two craps about the aspect at least in so far as taking a gunshot and thinking it's a bad gunshot it is going to go for a solution at any angle anytime it can get its gun on you and usually it needs a little bit of lead fire depending on the line of sight and other things going on this AI is hyper aggressive it is hyper aggressive we'll, we're gonna hit back on that in just a minute but you can see they're going down into the vertical they're both sitting and it's hard to see on the screen but you've got the yellow fighter at 344 knots and the pink I guess it's supposed to be red pink fighter at 409 knots and is there a G there's a heading I don't see any G labels on there maybe it'll be clearer when we start but we're gonna go ahead and watch this and they're gonna comment a little bit so we'll watch them maneuver for just a second here I'm excited to see what happens. This That's is fight right. one. And look at this. Starting off at the very beginning, you see that aggressive vertical maneuvering. It was kind of a hallmark of Lockheed Martin as they fought yesterday. Okay, so they've come to their second merge. They merged once. They both bid low. And now they're coming back around to the second merge. And what this, the space between them is what we call turning room. All right? And, and a, the fighter will have a tight circle, the tightest circle it can make based on its speed and its G of X feet. And if you have that turning rim, that means you can now turn towards the bad guy. You never want to turn away because then he can come right around here and he's got you. So you will notice that they're almost always, always turning into each other, right? And they're putting what we call the lift vector that's straight out of your head, okay, as you're sitting in the seat. They're going to put their lift vector right on 
the other aircraft or slightly above or below for the most part depending on on what they're trying to do is whether they're trying to climb or descend you can see the pink fighter it's hard to see but he's actually his lift vector is slightly below the yellow fighter and the yellow fighter lift vector is more or less on the pink fighter and now they're both kind of headed downhill you see that the altitude's already down to 18,000 or so is at 10 let's go ahead and click on them I'm not really sure it's hard to read. A quick gun burst there as Lockheed Martin got to the out. They're at 10,000. So it looks like the, the deck is at least, it might be five. They may actually be using the ground. We'll take a look at that when it, when it gets down there. And you'll notice that there was a quick gun burst right there. And that's something that almost never happens in human versus human. Rarely do we write off the perch or write off the, the merge, okay, it's on a high aspect neutral merge. Rarely do we take one circle and then immediately pull our nose out in front and take, try to take a shot. I'm going to go ahead and just talk about it right now because we'll get to it when the AI takes on the human. There's several reasons we don't do that. The biggest one, and, it, and it's interesting because it's more of a training and safety issue. Okay, Head-on attacks in World War I, World War II, any of the other wars, head-on attacks with guns, Okay, not missiles at 10 miles, 5 miles, but close in. You know, Really, you've got to be within about 6,000 feet with the gun. All right, and, and even closer when it used to be actual machine guns and not cannons. Head-on head -on attacks have a very high closure rate. And human reflexes being what they are, uh, it, and it tended to have people run into each other all the time. Okay? The Germans did it against American bomber formations. The Brits did it against the German bomber formations. The front of airplanes tended to be slightly less lethal as far as uh, machine guns, although with the B-17s and the B-24s, that's why there's chin turrets and guns that will shoot forward. So that, that changed a little bit. They're always trying to figure out the best way to go after the airplane. But the point is, with head-on head, head -on attacks, it's easy to hit each other. And in training, because we're talking about you know fast-moving, pointy jets, we are not allowed to do more than uh, more than 140 degrees aspect angle, I, a 40-degree cone. We cannot do head-on attacks. All right, we're not allowed to do that. And anytime we actually get to the point where it's more than about 40 degrees or less than, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, on a head-on head attack, we have to come off. That's a, what's called a training rule. It's a training stop. When you do something in training that's not like combat, it kind of becomes ingrained. And when you actually get to combat, something that's a perfectly viable tactic might not be there at the front of the brain. The AI gives two shits. The AI is pointing at you and he is going to shoot you. I said he, whatever you want to call it. It is going to shoot you at any angle it can. And the other big key, and they're going to talk a little bit about this that I found fascinating on this, is the amount of fine motor control that the AI has on pointing the airplane. Because in order to get a gunshot, you're actually, the, the gun is the airplane. And we have a HUD, we have a gun director, a gun director site of some kind, and there are some ways, there, you know, the computer is helping us out on, on where we need to put it. So there's two things going on here. Number one is the AI is really good at controlling the airplane in, in a very fine motor skill kind of way, okay? Whereas a human might overshoot or have issues because he's using his hand and his hand-eye coordination. He's not, part, he's not the plane like the AI kind of is. So they're better, they're better at that as far as the AI goes. And the other big advantage, which is kind of unfair and not very realistic, is having current state information. I, he knows, the AI knows exactly what the other target is doing, what his aspect angle is, what his speed is, so that, that add that fine motor control of getting a gunshot to knowing exactly where that airplane is going. And depending on how good the, the predictive AI is, and I don't know if they're, they're allowed to do any predictive stuff, I assume so. It can then kind of predict some some near-term stuff on where that dude's going to be in the near future, and then those shots are going to be very, very, very accurate. Okay, o almost impossible to get away from. So we're going to watch this a little bit more. Out in front, just very briefly, but we'll see if that was a too aggressive maneuver. If they overshot, and now a physics AI is to get back towards that six o'clock. These airplanes maneuvering really in close proximity. You can see two thousand feet already kind of staying inside of that three. okay you can see the red fighter is now trying to get his nose back around they talked about overshooting one of the the problems with a strong bid to a high aspect gunshot 
So as opposed to being back here where it's kind of easy to shoot and if the guy maneuvers, it's fairly easy to stay behind him. If it's a higher aspect gunshot and you take a big bid to lead to take that shot and miss, you're now going to have a high aspect enclosure issue. All right. And that's where they say overshoot. And that's going to give the guy that you just tried to take a shot on a bit of an advantage there, provided you didn't actually blow him up. And what, what the human's going to find out is it didn't matter if he forced high aspect passes from the AI. The AI was was doing it because it wanted to and it just put its gun on him again. And, and whereas in our training, if, you, if you're flying BFM against another human and you force a high aspect pass like that, you've gained a pretty big advantage. The question is, did you survive that? And you, you tended not to against the AI. We'll get to that in a minute. 3,000 foot bubble to turn the gun on. This is this is a knife fight in a phone booth, as we would say. At physics and All right, that's a great picture. So you can see that they were two circle. They, were, they forced that overshoot, and now the pink fighters actually carved in pretty well inside. I guess he's going this way. Pretty well inside the yellow fighter's turn circle. And provided he's got enough G and power and, and nose authority, he can get his nose around pretty quick. But now they're starting to approach the floor, and it looks like maybe it's a 5,000. The floor. No, actually, they're at 42. So let's see where they go down to. AI yeah, doing a great job there, turning the table, getting about equal damage onto Lockheed Martin right and now. And watching the fight now, if you take a look at the altitude, right, we're looking at the distance between each other. And that was a great one. You can see what's happening is the yellow, the yellow AI is just attempting to rate around as fast as possible, whereas the the pink AI is actually trying to carve inside of the turn circle of the yellow, and they're corkscrewing down. But of course, you can't do that forever. Eventually, you're you're going to find yourself at the floor and, and if you look at the speed the yellow fighters at 328 knots he's actually quite a bit faster so he's gonna be raiding around his circle and G is on there that's good one's at five I think and was six and one's at 4.4 raiding around a circle at a higher speed for a given G is going to move you around the circle faster and will shoot there's a great picture here of a two circle fight and what that actually means and you'll find out why one of the AI ends up winning this thing. You can see they have hit points, some kind of hit points set up to where, you know, a, a golden BB doesn't automatically kill you. That's another thing that's kind of important. It, it only takes one bullet hitting the right thing and then it's over. That, that's just one of those vagaries of, of combat. And they've actually set up a system where you have to have so much time in the gun was before uh, you can actually get a kill. It's kind of interesting. I'm not really sure how that's working as far as the simulation with the human based on him having to use a joystick and put the funnel tar funnel uh, uh, gun sight on the gun director on the enemy and how that you know how the scores are I, I don't know how that's simulated I'm assuming it's it's the same simulation for the AI but th there's no real deep information on, on how they did that but in any event the point is they you have to have so many I think seconds or so of in the gun was and you'll see that it actually uh, brightens up that little cone right there is the gun itself and it's a it's a little cone coming out so dispersion really is what that's probably simulating right there where the bullets are at that range or 50 percent of the bullets however they've done it so you've got to keep them in that gun was for so long and a gun solution let's put it that way all right so the the pink one's coming around he's doing uh, 258 the yellow one's at 200 and that's fps 325 knots so he's actually raiding around the circle faster so even though it looks like right here that the red guy's got a bit of an advantage ang angular advantage the yellow one is raiding faster so he's going to start going around that corner faster but of course we got the ground coming up here real soon Charlie, you want to be between 3,000 and 1,000 feet uh, for that weapons employment all right that was really cool right there and it looks like he made a bid to lag and potentially also worried about the floor and again I'm not really sure what the floor is because they're sitting at 1700 maybe it's 1500 so you can you can come downhill use God's G and all that energy that you're getting but eventually you've got to flatten that out okay you've got to turn that into just a horizontal fight or into a yeah, horizontal fight otherwise you're gonna go into the floor and it's interesting they did talk about it uh, a couple of the teams had problems with that they were actually getting scraped off on the floor so I don't know it's I don't know if the predictive algorithm versus the other plane was overcoming the the algorithm watching the floor, but that's something a human has to do. You got to be looking outside and going, where is the other airplane? Let me predict what his aspect is. Let me predict what his airspeed is based on what I see him doing. What is the line of sight on the canopy? Let me let me watch what altitude I'm at. Let me predict what what kind of maneuver I need to not hit the ground. 
That so that's all going on in their mind at the same time. So you'll see that the pink fighter is going into a bid to lag, but I think it's also a ground save to make sure he doesn't a ground avoidance. A save is more like holy crap, flat plate. I think I'm going to hit the ground, but just making sure that he transitions to the rate fight at the ground correctly. And now what we're going to turn into here is, that, and this is really a two circle fight, although there was a couple reversals I think in there. Uh, based off of the one high aspect gunshot that was attempted. But we're going to turn into a two circle uh, fight down at the floor. And it, it's really great because they're going to do a top view of it. And you're going to really see how that rate fight thing develops. So, but quickly descending towards the uh, hard deck at a thousand. All right, so let's take a look at that. Now, I wish I could actually maneuver these. Um, it looks like we are looking at. Does it have a. Doesn't have a good angular thing. That, that bottom thing may be showing it. I'm not, I'm not certain if we're directly f looking straight down, but it's enough that you can see now the two circles. And if you look at that, you go, you know what? Pink Fighter has an advantage, right? He, he is behind, more or less, very close to behind the 3-9 line. I'm pointing at the screen like you can see it. He's actually behind the 3-9 line of the, which would be something like, it's hard to see the aspect, but the 3-9 line looks like something like that right there. So he's behind the 3-9 line. That gives him an advantage. And if he had the nose authority right now, he could yank his nose around, put his gun on, and start shooting. Of course, what the yellow fighter would do if he saw that is to break into the pink fighter and attempt to close that down. So what I'm saying is this guy would attempt to come around and get that shot. And, of course, the yellow fighter is going to attempt to tighten that circle up so that this guy can't get his nose on. Right now it's not. So what he's really trying to do is avoid getting into this cone, and he's attempting to get his cone onto the bad guy. When, when we fight, when we actually did it, um, th that's what we were doing, the exact same thing, but never did we look at this and go, ooh, what if I just wrap around high aspect and shoot him in the face? It, that, that was always a thing that we knew was a possibility, but because of training rules and safety, we never, that's not how we fought. The, the AI does. The AI does. So we're going to, I just started using this thing. We're going to see how cool we are with the eraser. There we go. You guys like that? It's freaking Gucci, isn't it? All right. All right, so let's see how this develops a little bit more. We've got 310 knots on the yellow fighter, and we've got 286 on the pink. So right now they're both rating around at roughly the same airspeed. So their rate over time on their circle is going to be pretty similar. What this means is if you extrapolate this over time, you can see that, and we'll just go ahead and draw this real quick. If nothing else changed, it looks like get yellow here it looks like the yellow fighter will do a circle something like this right about halfway through his turn and if we take the red fighter it looks like he will if we if he rakes around do something like this and that's maybe a little tighter than he was but you can see his nose is now coming on right red fighters nose is going to come on sooner than the yellow fighters so let's watch how that develops Remember, they're both probably, the AI is probably looking at this, both of them. And again, they have perfect state information of what the other one's doing. This goes into my question of how much predictive state information are they allowed to have or do they have. I don't know. Maybe that's been left up to the, to the teams to use or don't use. Um, but they're, both those airplanes are going, all right, I know that dude's at 286. I'm at 310. The floor is, I guess, 1500. We'll look at it. I'm not, I'm not sure if they go any lower than 1500. What what power setting? What do I need to be doing G-wise? What airspeed do I want to get the fastest rate around in time? And at this point, really all this is about is both of them hauling ass around the circle until the other one's gun, and he will eventually catch up, comes on. And at that point, someone's got to change the fight. The guy becomes defensive. In this case, the yellow fighter would have to do something different. Let's see what the AI does with all that. So take it Keep an eye on that as these guys are in a, uh, a uh, one circle flow right here, um, trying to kill each Now look at that, that's what I said. See how much closer the red fighter's front is to the yellow fighter? Now he has a 3-9, he has an aspect angle advantage over the yellow fighter. So airspeed wise, it looks like the red fighter made a bid. He used some airspeed, he's down to 263. The yellow fighter maintained what he had now we have a 40 knot difference and that's fairly significant and for whatever reason physics AI's AI decided to pull around and maybe it's going for a shot so it's taking its energy and using it to create more angular advantage tightening it tightening up its turn circle so it comes inside of the yellow fighter and it may be going for a shot right here but 
when it does that, look at that. It, it's loose. Sorry, over here, it's losing airspeed to do so. Right, it's already down to 263. And I guess the floor. I don't know what the floor is supposed to be on this. There, one's at 13 and one's at 15. Shut up. That's right. And that played out just like you would see between two very aggressive BFMers. All right. So it looks like it thought it might be able to do it, and it decided not to. And you can see that it actually then goes a bit to lag. That's what we mean. He's trying to go back to the back part of this guy's turn circle. And he's going to go ahead and probably come off of the turn a little bit. Maybe try to gain some airspeed. But that's going to allow this guy who's still done a nice job maintaining 300 to continue around the circle at 300. And that's going to give the yellow fighter and the ability to, to take out some of this angle that he's lost already. So to start evening this thing up. And then once the... We'll see what the red AI decides to try to get to airspeed wise before it starts to roll back up and start turning with the guy again. And it looks like maybe it decided it wanted a, a gunshot, but realized it could not get there um, and then had to come off because there is a limit to the amount of nose authority that you have. Once you start pulling on the stick, there's only so much control surface back there on the Viper, any air fighter for that matter. And once you get the maximum deflection, you're getting what you get. And as you slow down, you get less and less nose rate. And if you just keep pulling on the stick and trying to point your nose, you're actually going to, your, your rate across the horizon is just going to slow down. And if that happens, that yellow fighter is going to rate, 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 and come right around and show up at your six o'clock and take you out. So that's very interesting. Uh, track of 34, 1200, it's at five G's, 5.5. So he's 300 knots with a few more G. That's that's even more turn circle or more rate as he comes around because he's actually at a, a higher G right there. The circle will be tighter with a higher rate. So very interesting. All right, let's see where they go from here. This is in real life. This vertical descending, spiraling fight down to the floor. And then you saw a very aggressive floor save there out of lock. Very, very cool. So the yellow AI Lockheed just kind of hung out with what it had. So there's some other things going on right here because this is a guns versus guns fight. There's no missiles, no heaters, nothing else. So there are other wezes that can be explored, but they're not in this particular simulation. This is purely trying to get for, to a gun solution. So as long as the red fighter cannot put his nose on, on or in lead, he's probably going to need lead because of the line of sight, then there's no real reason for the yellow fighter to tighten down or to use any of its airspeed or energy to change the angular difference. And as a matter of fact, if you see, if you remember where they were a circle ago, now he's he's made up some ground, right? He, he has a lot less, there's a lot less angular advantage for the pink fighter right now based on the yellow fighter holding the 300 knots in about 5.5, look at that, it's still the same G. That's another thing that the, the AI is gonna be very good at. When it says, I want to do 290, or I want my best rate in relation to what my state information is on this guy it's going to hold it whereas a human when you get there and you start i can't remember his name we'll talk about the guy when he gets there but when you see him he's he's looking back behind him he's got his goggles on but it's the same thing in the jet and in the jet he'd be under g he's looking back there trying to figure out where that guy is what his particular aspect is where do i want to put my lift vector and he's going to have a much less fine control over the the roll the lift vector the g he's holding all that is going to be a bit more of a like that for a human, whereas the computer, the AI is going to go, I want this, and it will set it. It will put it there. All right, let's see how this goes on. Lockheed Martin, and now they are operating in a regime that there are few human pilots. That's pretty cool. I mean, really, the, the Lockheed fighter is almost even it up, but still, this is a good view. You can see that the physics AI still has a slight angular advantage. He has accelerated to 262, but the Lockheed fighter has maintained almost 300 at 289. He's 5.4 Gs, and the, and the physics AI is holding 4.8. So if this stayed like this the whole time over time, the Lockheed fighter would eventually start eating up the physics AI, and then you would have a situation where instead of here on the, on the outside of the two-circle fight, what you would start to end up seeing is, we'll see if we get there, is that the Lockheed fighter would be here with his nose in a bit of an advantage over the physics AI. But let's see if we get there because that doesn't mean it's going to stay this way. It's very interesting actually how well the Lockheed fighter, at least for the moment, has been able to take the uh, the disadvantage it had and start to turn that around just a bit. Unknown if it will continue to be able to do that. Well, they can do this routinely. They're within 500 feet of the floor fighting by flying their airplane, watching outside. All right, so that's very interesting. You see that 
we are now 235. So the physics AI has converted some more of its airspeed into angles, meaning it has used that airspeed to tighten down and bring its nose, and it looks like it might be attempting another gunshot. And right now, that's actually a pretty good angular dis difference. The Lockheed fighter only tightened down enough to keep the pink fighter from getting his nose on. So as the pink fighter started, as physics started to use energy to bring his nose around, the it looks like the Lockheed fighter tightened up just enough just to keep his nose from coming on. So the, 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 the circle is getting a little bit tighter right there. And you can see that he's tightened down. He's, he's used some of his about 300 knots of airspeed down to 261, still at 4.7 G, still pretty high. And the physics AI looked like it was going for another gunshot. And we'll see if it if it comes off and makes another bid to lag. See if it likes that or not. Seeing what that other aircraft is doing and making sure that the entire time they don't hit that hard neck. Yeah, and the challenge here and one of the reasons why we give... So isn't that interesting? So that next merge, that next across the circle, and what you've noticed is the circles are starting to kind of collapse. There's not as much turning room between these two guys. It looks a lot more neutral. So we're sitting at 252, similar speeds, very similar Gs, and about as neutral as you can get right here. A slight angular advantage by Physics AI. Pilots uh, heads up displays and helmet mounted displays is really you lose sight, you lose the fight in this particular. Okay. Very interesting. It looks like they're both doing about exactly the same thing. So we've held that slight angular advantage from the physics AI. We are now at the outside of the turn circle. We'll see if it tries to convert this airspeed that it has and again try to tighten down and bring its nose on to the Lockheed jet. For case, our agents have perfect state information, so they know where each other is. They know. That was interesting. The the Lockheed jet lost a lot of angles. I don't know if you noticed it, but it had a bid where it had to come out and it might have been trying to avoid the floor. And it climbed a little bit actually is what it looked like it did. And the problem with that is if you climb, now you're losing energy. And it looks like the physics AI aircraft did not climb like that, was still a little bit lift vector below and it used that advantage. And look at the angular advantage it just created. That slight mistake on the Lockheed's on the Lockheed aircraft on that bid to climb it. I'm not really sure. I'm very curious why it did that. That was very interesting, actually. Um, and I didn't notice, I'd have to back it up. I wonder if the physics AI aircraft looked like it might be making a bid to climb and the Lockheed might have tried to counter it. This is where I'm starting to, where I'm talking about. And they just said it right there. They have perfect state information and predictive state information. I don't know what they were allowed to do, if there was any rules on that or not, but that was a really interesting move. That was almost a, a, a mistake that a human would make, right? When you're, when you're, sometimes when you're fighting another human, especially students or something, and you're across the two circle fight, which is what we call this here, and you're, you're, you're looking over at him, and he's headed off this way, and all of a sudden you'll see his, his wings, which were kind of on the horizon, will crack and he'll start to climb, and you go, that's, that's an advantage for me, I'll tighten down, because his turn circle is going to increase and open up, and I have a, an opportunity to create some more angles right here. Oh, what uh, you know, they they have information on each other, and they're making those those algorithms are making those decisions. You know, we're about all right. So we get to the next merge, and all of a sudden, Physics AI has rebuilt this advantage that it had: 244 versus 252, similar G. It's really interesting. You know, the algorithms are almost fighting exactly the same, but but they're they're created by two different companies here, two different teams. So there's going to be some differences on how well they react and and what their plan is in here, but we have basically had this kind of neutral-ish with a slight advantage to the to the physics AI team the whole way. About 100 seconds into it right now, and both have gotten quick shots, um, but frankly, on the deck, pretty even matchup. A uh, really classic, exciting to watch. Classic two-circle fight. So I wish I knew what the deck was. I keep saying that, but but they've, they've been anywhere from 1,500 to 1,300. So I'm not really sure what, what the actual deck is. The... Physics AI is still creating an advantage, 4.6. They're both at about 250 knots. Very interesting. You can see right there. You can literally see on the screen the two different circles as they're flying around there at the floor. Really important is going to be your energy control when you're down here. Both of them very close. And it's just slowly, slowly, slowly the physics AI 
algorithm, their AI is just flying that jet just a little bit better right now. Starting to create more angles right here. You can see it at the next merge. That's just less angles he has to have, excuse me, later on when he goes for a gunshot. And it looks like he's just setting up for that one attempt well, to get that high angle. 240 knots. I mean, they're nearly identical right now in the performance and the energy that that airplane has as they continue to raid around. And that's why you're seeing as these circles continue, one is not making a substantial... See, now you can start to see more than likely it's going to go for a shot right here. And look at this. He's maintained 261. So the Physics AI maintained 261 at 4.8. I think right about here, the Lockheed AI kind of realized that the angles were there for the physics AI to take a shot. He's trying to tighten down to keep the physics AI from getting out and lead fire. But because of the separation right now on the turning room, it looks like the physics AI might get his gun on. Advantage or yep. progress against the other. They're just so close to the AI trying to get that nose on and just... Just misses it, but look at the energy it used. It was at 260. It tightens down to try to get that shot on down to 230 four G's, but they're down to a similar energy state, and that allowed the physics AI jet to create even more angles. Right, he's taking some more angles away from the eye aspect, and it's not going to be long. It looks like before he's able to get in there. So at this point, we see can they? And then so, and they're going to talk about this. Obviously, the Lockheed jet was losing and decided here to reverse the fight. And the problem is he's giving up a lot of angles to the physics AI jet to reverse the fight right there. You'll see that he's going to kind of fly out in front. But once you get to a certain point, he knew, I say he like it's a living being, but the AI probably, and it may be predictive, it probably looked at that and went, you know what, next circle, there's nothing I can do. He's going to get his gun on. I have to try to change something, do something different. Maybe it will make a mistake. So they're going to go ahead and attempt to come around the other way. Come up with something else, and Lockheed does. They reverse back into a single circle fight now. So instead of continuing, they turn, they do something else. Ooh, and it looks like maybe a shot there. Very much what you want to see your human fighter pilots do. This almost looks like, you know, your clap. So that was very interesting. Did he, you know, when he reversed the fight, that gave him some room. He came around, didn't quite get it. I, the physics AI seemed to make a slight mistake right there because he didn't turn back with... Lockheed immediately, he kind of leveled out, rolled out, so I'm not really sure. That, that, that move right there almost looked like your classic guns weave. There we go. Um, this is a, a, a fantastic fight. We've watched it collapse to the deck. We've seen one circle. We've seen vertical. We've seen two circle. If you were watching... Very interesting. So all of a sudden, when the Lockheed jet changed the fight, its AI did a better job with the two single circle turns. 220 knots, 206, very similar like these guys were talking about. But it looks like the Lockheed algorithm just had a a, a better a better single circle fight plan. This, uh, you know, uh, with, with your bodies out at, uh, you know, after. All right, there was a little bit of a flat plate. The the turn for the physics AI, it looked like it had to level out to not hit the ground. That's good. Look at the angular difference that made. Once you level out and start going straight or more, more straight than your tight turn was. All of a sudden, because the Lockheed jet's still turning around, look at all the angles the Lockheed jet has created, and all of a sudden we have a huge a advantage. Alice, you know, in the range, you know, in the debrief room there, this looks like human dogfighting. It, it absolutely does, and we would. Now you can see, whereas the physics AI had an angular advantage, now no kidding, the Lockheed jet has an angular advantage and because there's so much distance separation from these guys across circle you're going to see the Lockheed jet probably put its gun on and this is this is where that high aspect gunshot capability of the AI is going to start taking over you could even use a setup almost identical oh, this to, this to debrief our fight look at that so yep so it lights it up now his gun isn't even on the Lockheed gun is on the accuracy of the AI let's see how many we'll call them hit points just for lack of a better word the Lockheed is able to take off of the There's a hit by, uh, ooh, Lockheed getting a... Oh, oh. Get killed him. Just like, just like that. So that was absolutely fascinating. It, it really was. There, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, we'll take a look next at the human versus human. Real, Really interesting stuff. The physics AI seemed to have a better two-circle plan. When, lock, when the Lockheed jet changed the fight to single circle, it seemed to have a better single circle capability in its algorithm. That was really interesting. So let's take a look at uh, one of the human dogfight ones. All right, here is the AI taken on Banger. He's an F-16 WIC uh, graduate at least. Might be an instructor, I'm not sure. 
But we'll go ahead and listen to they, them talk about the setup here. Um, what a great setup they've been able to set up. Before we start and before we give controls over to Banger to get this fight started off, any predictions, Glock, on what you've seen? I think that this is going to be a really close fight. I think Banger is going to do a fantastic job. And that at the end of the day, what we're going to see is that there was a credible AI agent out of Heron Systems, parts and pieces of which would be able to be lifted out into the real world and things that Banger would be happy to have on his airplane or flying in that airplane next to him. So if you're looking at the left side of the screen. Okay, so that was a uh, that was definitely a, a interesting statement by Glock right there. Obviously, like most things, AI, what, what we're looking for is the stuff we can use. And typically, it's the stuff that can enhance the human and not replace it. The it cannot be it cannot be stated enough that the AI having perfect state information about the other airplane is a huge advantage it will not necessarily have. So simply going analog, it's great, it's not great, out of this saying, oh, AI will rule the world and you know the, the day of the fighter pilot is gone is a little bit short sighted or a lot bit short sighted actually. So they're, they're going to take the cool stuff out of this, the stuff that's useful, figure out how that's useful, and go from there. All right, let's get this going again. You've got the score on the top, all the things that Glock talked about. You've got a great God's eye view of those, that 3-9 pass that we're going to get ready to do. In the upper right-hand corner, we've got the initial conditions. In the lower right-hand portion of the screen, you are in Banger's F-16, fighting alongside of him. You can see his view. You can see off basically at probably the 11 o'clock position you can see a reticle around the, the enemy aircraft to, to let them know uh where he is and you can see him uh getting a tally right there uh right now so um i can't wait for this fight we've talked long enough it's the main event alpha dogfight trials banger i'm gonna turn it over to you human versus ai fight song all right, here we go. all right here we go so you can see that they're coming up to the uh to the merge and they'll start this thing here in just a minute see the little lights when it goes green it starts all right so you've got the the kind of stadium view right here you got one jet and the other I'm trying to see if i can figure out from what banger's doing which one he is I'm not really sure let's see banger's yellow whichever one's yellow we'll find out here in a minute it's hard to see the colors on this thing right now but it looks like they're about three thousand feet based on what it was showing away from each other right here One's heading 180, one heading 360, basically the same altitude at 16,038 feet, exactly at 300 knots. So the starting parameters are exactly the same. It's a perfectly neutral merge, and we'll see what, where they go from there. You can see that red, yellow, green, and when it hits green, the fight's fight is on. Fight's on. on. These initial conditions, you can see that. So that was actually fascinating. The first thing Banger did was go low. The first thing Heron, which was the winner of the AI competition, did was make a bid up. And that was really interesting because what it's going to do is it's going to create a little bit more turning room for itself with that. And based on its perfect state information of Banger's jet, something in the AI told it that that was the best move at the time. And it gave it just a little bit more potential energy. If it hurts it overall, we'll find out. But really, the speed is about the same. And it's hard to see the G. And I apologize for earlier. I was cutting off some of the information on what the left fighter was doing. But let's see, see how this thing goes from here. Now, remember, the, the AI gives no craps about any kind of training rules or bad habit patterns from training. All right, what Banger's doing is a pretty standard high aspect. I want to work myself into a low aspect gunshot maneuver at, during, at a high aspect merge, which is to say we train to show up back here. Get into the camera. We, want to be, we don't want to be back this guy shooting the guy in front. We want a low aspect, about four aspect, nice, easy gunshot. We want to get back behind the guy and shoot him. We don't train to do these head on a bunch of snapshots. Okay, and by snapshot I mean a a, a very short uh, flirt fleeting, not a flirting, but a fleeting shot. We don't. That's not how we train. So all of that baggage is being drug along with banger right now, 
as he, and this is nothing against Banger. Probably kick my rear in in BFM, uh, especially at this point anyway. But nah, he'd never beat me. No way. <laughs> But anyway, all that baggage is with Banger. So we got to kind of stand our thing. And the AI, fascinating, has gone. I'm going to make a small bit up because I think that's... Here's what I think it's doing. It's it's going to go for the first gunshot it can get. The first gunshot it can get is a high aspect snap. And it went ahead and built itself a little tiny bit more turning room as it saw Banger going downhill. And now it's rolled its lift vector over and it said, here I come, boy. I'm about to shoot you. Now let's see what happens. Range opening up. Banger aggressively maneuvering nose low, looking to collapse that range as quickly as he can. And good on Banger because he saw it, right? He saw it. Now you can see in the top right where he is in the he's in the gaming chair and he's he's flying the F-16 with the controls off to the side. It has to be said he's not in an actual F-16 cockpit. That's his comfort zone and where he is. He's using a Oculus or whatever that is headset. Um, it can be sometimes a little disorienting depending on how familiar he is with with simulations and what it feels and looks like. And there's a lot of other things going on in, in here. He's not in an actual jet. So there's going to be a slight negative transfer from some of that real jet stuff over to uh, working in a simulator. So that is going to hamper his performance ju just a little bit. Not making excuses, just... That's the way it is. The AI doesn't care about any of that. It's, it has no cares as far as all that goes. So let's see what happens here. And he did do a nice job. He actually noticed the uh, the Heron trying to put his lift vector on, and now he's collapsing that, as the as the uh, announcer said. 6,000, 5,000. He's going to continue that turn and watch as he stays outside of that nose as much as possible. Look at that. Zero damage. All right, so he got away with that. Looks like the AI did take a shot, and now they're at a fairly neutral merge. Banger's nose is nose low. You can see Heron's is nose high and a relatively neutral merge. It's too bad we can't get a top view to see what the angular difference looks like, although it might be, is that information here? Track angle 139. Looks like it's pretty similar, actually. Just a banger through that initial merge, something we did not see almost any of the AI agents able to do. And now it's going to be a matter of controlling that range. And that was fascinating to me. See, that that was a, a fairly vertical merge right there. And then Heron came back around the other way. So it looks to me like the AI figured the fastest way to get another gunshot was to actually come back the other way. It was able to do that because there was so much turning room between the two. So it's actually pulling. It's hard to see what its G is when I It'll pause. Another opportunity. Yeah, it's still hard to see. And unfortunately, in the replay, it's hard to see. 5.2 G. And it looks like, all right, so this is a bummer right here, right? This is that This is that almost pure head-on shot that we're, humans are going to have a hard time fine-tuning and making that shot. And the AI is going to pull that nose right to where it needs to be, get the perfect lead fire that it needs based on having great current state information and whatever predictive stuff it's allowed to do and bleh. so this is this is going to hurt banger watch out buddy here it comes come back around that range separation opening back up it's going to be very difficult to stay out of the way of that nose there. Little hit. all right i'm in the middle of editing this this is going to be a little kludge together but things keep coming to my brain because something i i missed right there that i thought was really interesting i don't know if you noticed but banger tried to avoid getting gunned did you see the AI try to avoid getting gunned? <laughs> I this is a hugely, hugely. You can see my uh, my. I'm right back there. Oh, geez, there's two Guidos. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, this is clues together in the editing. Banger tried to get away from getting gunned. He he did a gun's defense as he saw the AI put its gun on, but the AI did not care. The AI did not try to avoid. The AI's purpose was to shoot Banger. Banger looked at that and said, I know this AI, based on what I've been watching, is going to have a huge advantage, so I need to get out of the way. And holy cow, how I, I, I can't believe I missed that at the beginning. That is unbelievably important in, in the case of humans fighting AI. The emotional response from the human, whereas the AI does not have that. And unless you build in a personal or a, a survival instinct into the AI, it's not going to care. It's going to go after you with its perfect killing solution. And you saw Banger try to avoid it. I, th I don't think you can make too much of that because that is incredibly important 
in regards to uh, AI and warfare. So really, really interesting. All right, back to Banger trying to take this thing on. So a little hit. You can see his hit point went down just a little bit. Took a couple hits. And watch what he's doing. You can see him up there. He's got to contort. He's got to turn around. He's trying to he's trying to use that Mark One brain and his Mark One eyeballs to do all the predictive and state information out of his brain based on where he knows how he knows these fights go, what the aspect angle he's looking at. He has to guess at the energy state of the enemy aircraft based on what he knows about the F-16, what it can do, what he and the other aircraft have just done and make a, a good guess about the next maneuver that he needs. Whereas the AI knows exactly everything about what Banger is currently doing in the jet. Okay, or at least he knows what Banger's jet is currently doing. The AI knows that. Just a little bit. Hit. Absolutely. As this fight's going now downhill, vertical down, you see each of them really rolling that airplane and going aggressively downhill. So what's interesting here also to me is it looks like, you know, Banger's doing doing some things that you didn't see in the rest of the fights. The AIs had fairly predictable moves based on kind of perfecting exactly what you would probably do, picking the perfect maneuver. Heron's having to be much more reactive over what Banger's doing because he's really making some serious bids down towards the ground. But the problem is that Heron knows exactly, based on Banger's state information, what that airplane's doing. So it can then, as long as that AI is pretty good at it, and it appears to be, it can then apply the perfect, or as perfect as it can, can determine, maneuver both in G, uh, power setting, lift vector, all that good stuff. Hill, passing now down through 10,000 feet. This very ow, 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 ow. So, and that right there, great example. That is a shot we would never take in training. We Somebody would have come off so that we have, we say, come off or come off right. American rules of the road apply. Come off right for a left to left pass, just like you're going down the highway. So, both of us are coming at each other and we get inside 9,000 feet. It's no closer to 9,000, pure pursuit, uh, at least by 6,000 coming off right for a left to left pass and we go by each other. That way we don't go and I have to have to write uh, people's uh, mothers and wives and things about why we killed each other in training. But here we go. Very interesting. The AI does not care about that. And he has about, uh, looks like the AI has about three fourths of bangers uh, hit points off of there. See, there's Heron with that really amazing fine motor control for that uh, gunshot in a very, very close well, Bangers very looks like he's going to come very uphill very and again try to come back around in a little bit of a uh, lag roll, potentially barrel roll-ish thing here. And sitting, it's hard to see the energy state because I don't know why it's so right, bad right now. Fight, you can see, uh, I wish they did this in 720p. I wish they would have done it in something higher. It drives me a little bit crazy, actually. But anyway, they did it in 720p. And here we go. We've got the Heron coming uphill and Banger attempting to not get Banger shot again. But look, the, the nose is just going to track on and the AI is just going to go after him. Trying to avoid that merge. Uh, Zing. Oh, man, look at that. Just tracks again. him through that. Um, oh, jeez. And he's got one hit point first, left, uh, right? <laughs> and now Heron, you can see, has created itself a very good angular advantage. And this is one, the exact reason why you don't go up. I know Banger's trying to work this and see what he can do against the AI, make it make a mistake. But once Banger went up and kind of got slow up over the top, the the Herons had the ability to A, get its gun on, and then do a pretty tight turn into you know a lag position onto Banger's jet right there. And all of a sudden, he's got huge... Heron's got a huge angular advantage on Banger's right behind him at this point. No There's almost really shooters. nothing Banger can do. Um, and now we're starting to talk about maybe the floor. So, Heron boom, he just goes, just goes gun on, and it's over. Nice job, and they've managed to get back boom. To just, I mean, there. flawless <laughs> victory. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. But good on him for uh, putting... Good on him for putting flawless victory if the, uh, if the other guy didn't put any shots on him. <laughs> I recommend you guys go check that out. I'm not going to go through the rest of them. He actually he loses 0 to 5. He tries several different things. It all really comes down to, I think, two things. Number one, the perfect state information was kind of a, a ridiculous and stupid. Not, not stupid. It, 
it was almost it, it was almost impossible to overcome for the human. I don't know how you would simulate some kind of sensor system for the AI so that it was maybe not perfect information all the time. Um, so there is there's that part of it that's kind of interesting right there. And the second one is the training rules thing is just something you, you'd probably have to to just get rid of. And I, I wonder. And I don't know what was in Banger's head, whether he knew that at the beginning. He's been watching the thing, I assume. Or whether he kind of went to that. Because they do talk about it a little bit, about what his game plan is. And, you know, it may have been just from the very beginning, if all he did was try to get his gun on, it would have just been a series of high-angle snaps until he got to the floor and then it's a rate fight. So I, I don't I don't know. It, and it's possible, though, that the AI with its perfect state information was just going to be a better snap high angle snapshot and it was going to be very difficult even to get to the floor for banger and survive down there and then get into a rate fight in which case in a, in a pure rate fight you would assume that the ai would be have a little bit of an advantage on that as well based on its ability to control the aircraft in a very fine-tuned uh, fashion right there all right guys i hope you like that it was just a little uh it was an interesting thing to me on what's going on this is something that that i am pretty passionate and very interested in about and I, I, kind of, I like this stuff, man. It's very cool. So let me know what you think down down below. I don't know what the... I'm not going to monetize this one because I'll probably get some uh, copyright strike or some crap from DARPA. So I don't know. We'll just leave this one open. Everybody take a look at. And I do appreciate you all coming by. And we'll see you later. I wanted to add one thing in here I thought was kind of interesting. Because I... Shout out to Mover. Uh, he he uh, does a YouTube thing. Um kind of got this idea from him. I don't want to do this for you guys, but I was listening to his and he brought up a, a good point and a bad point. It was very, it was kind of interesting to me actually what he was saying. So the point was that Banger had a disadvantage because he probably wasn't familiar with simulator. Now that I, I touched on that slightly. I said, he's sitting, he's not in his actual F-16. And it, it's a good point and it's a bad point. The, the good point is it's 100% true that Banger or anybody else, if they're, if they're more experienced or, or proficient in something, whatever the system is, the whole task, how you sit, what, what your environment is, you're going to get better. He made, he made a mention that DCS players might have even been better against the AI, and they, they very well may have. In fact, that's probably something that Darby should investigate, to be quite honest, and maybe they are. Um, this is what I'm talking, what I've been talking about for a long time with training. And then the corollary, the follow-on to that is that he says, well, you know, a, a human pilot will use cues in the jet. You'll have, have the audible cues of the rush of the, of the air, the feel of the jet, the rumble. of the, There's a lot of things. Each jet talks to you. You get a feel. You have a better idea of what, what your energy state is because you've flown the jet. And, dude, the, all of that is 100% true. It is 100% true, but the problem with that as a factor against an AI is the AI doesn't give a shit. It doesn't. The AI doesn't have that problem. It doesn't. Now, let's say you took the AI directly out of this program and you tried to plug it straight into an F-16. You might have some similar issues in that the compatibility between the two and it doesn't fly the real F-16 as well. That's kind of the same concept. But really, the AI isn't going to care about any of that. Now, whether any of that makes the human better than an AI, I really kind of doubt it because the AI is not going to care about the cues. It's not going to have to process wind rush sounds. It's not going to have to process Gs other than to know what G it's at right and what the maximum is and what it needs to get the gun on or whatever it's trying to do whatever maneuver it's attempting to do so it's it's a 100 percent true ism that the human pilot would have probably done better in a more familiar setting but all that means is the human has to get into that setting you know if it's a sim setting then they would get better and if you practiced would it matter i think that's also a fascinating thing for darpa to look at hey Take a DCS kid and a person and take a couple fighter pilots and give them 50 hours flying the sim against the AI. See, do they get any better? D does that matter? You know, so I, I think it's a really interesting 
it's a really interesting discussion point. And I, I think it's also tied into what I was talking about earlier about the perfect state information that the AI has. Because if you put the human in the jet with all of his skill and knowledge and taking into account all those things we just talked about, and you put the AI in the jet, but it also has to somehow have some kind of sensor and use that sensor to be able to then fight against the human, then that perfect state information isn't there and it's not going to be quite as good. So then who's better? That's, that's a good question. From a human factor standpoint, as far as withstanding the G and being able to fight and you know sweat getting in your eye doesn't matter, that kind of thing, the AI is going to be head and shoulders above. But is it going to be able to take all that information in in a real world situation and turn it into a win against a human? That's, that's where we've got to get to. The, sim the simulation is great. And I think it gets a lot of good training. I wouldn't poo-poo it quite as much just because it's not fighting a human in a real jet. But it is definitely a, a interesting discussion point to talk about. So anyway, thought I'd throw that in. All right, now we're really done. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate the support of the channel. We'll see you all later.